Hey guys, so this is my second video on mathematicians in fiction, and I decided to do the character Harry Adams from Sphere. So once again, another Michael Crichton book that was made into a movie. Now the book was published in 1987, and the movie was released in 1998. And since it's not as well known as Jurassic Park, I figure I would go through a bit of a plot synopsis without any real spoilers. So. A group of scientists, a psychologist, Norman Johnson, a mathematician, Harry Adams, a zoologist, Beth Halpin, and an astrophysicist, Ted Fielding, go to a deep sea habitat, along with U.S. Navy personnel, to travel to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, where an enormous spacecraft has been discovered. In the cargo hold of that spacecraft, the team discover a mysterious spherical object that is of extraterrestrial origin. After members of the team start interacting with the sphere, strange things start happening. So there you go. Now, differences between the book and the movie. So uh, there are some not so minor and, 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 and some minor changes between the two. So there are some differences uh, between the two. So plot-wise, not really big differences without getting into details, of course. Um, I think the changes made in the movie make sense considering the budget and special effects constraints. So, but here's the funny thing. Uh, when you look at Jurassic Park, if you had to guess which one had the bigger budget, you would say Jurassic Park. No. So, even adjusted for inflation, this movie had a bigger budget of in uh, 20, uh, 23 dollars, uh, 168 million compared to Jurassic Park's 132 million. I may have said 168 billion, but 168 million versus 132 million. But, the thing about Jurassic Park is that a lot of it is the spectacle, and this one is is a low key, going more into the psychological. So I don't know. Maybe the bigger budget went into paying the actors. The movie has three very big actors in it. I guess I'll mention those. Uh, mention them: Dustin Hoffman, uh, Sharon Stone, who at the time was pretty big, and of course uh, Samuel Jackson, who plays Harry Adams. Also, I think it may be Queen Latifah's first movie. I'll, uh, I'll have to check that, and I'll put a note right there if that's true. So maybe that the budget went into the actors. I don't know. Uh, so although it doesn't appear to be this outwardly, uh, and Michael Crichton isn't known for this genre, the, the story falls into cosmic horror. And if you're not familiar with cosmic horror, cosmic horror is a subgenre of horror which creates dread and fear, not through gore or explicit violence, but through uh, the uncomfortableness that comes with the unknown and the incomprehensible. So, although in this story there's a valid explanation of why the scientists in these specific fields are chosen, they also represent the failures of their fields to explain what's going on. The encounter, they encounter technology which breaks the laws of known physics. That's their physicists. Uh, they come across creatures that can't be explained through biology. That's your, your biochemists. And they experience any th uh, things that would push anyone to insanity. And that defies uh, reason. That's your psychiatrist. And also defy logic, which is your mathematician. So let's talk about Harry. Um, there are some differences between Harry in the book and Harry in the movie. Uh, Harry in the book is 30 years old. He's the youngest member of the team, in fact, and he's presented as a bit sardonic. And he's described as being a child prodigy. So he's kind of like uh, this kind of annoyed, smarter than everyone. And he is the smartest person in the room, and it just seems to kind of annoy him. Uh, like, every, like he's waiting for everyone to catch up. Harry in the movie is played by Samuel Jackson, who at the time was 50 years old, even though he looks... He looks really good for 50. Um, so he plays his character with humor and, 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 and a good mix of common sense. Now the irony of this uh, between the book and the movie is that Ted Fielding, who's played by Lee Shriver, who at the time wasn't a big actor, and he's, he, I think he's, he's fairly well known now. If you don't know who Lee Shriver is, he played uh, in the Wolverine uh, or X-Men Origins, he played Sabretooth, he's a solid actor. So he plays the astrophysicist, who in the book is 50, but when Leif Schreiber uh, played this role, he was 31. And the other thing that's kind of funny is that the way the uh, the way Leif Schreiber's character uh, Fielding 
is depicted in the movie is more like Adam's character uh, in the book. So Harry might be one of my favorite depictions of a mathematician in a movie. He isn't an emotionless, socially awkward walking calculator. His field of study doesn't seem apparent in the story as the others. So, for example, the psychologist is psychoanalyzing everything at all times. The astrophysicist is discussing cosmology and relativity, and the biochemist is making observations about the strange life forms they're encountering. But we don't see Harry pull out a chalkboard and do calculations, but he does use math. So math is logic, it's reasoning, it's abstract thought. He figures things out before anybody else does with logic. He solves an important puzzle using logic. His skills of deductive reasoning are so great that at times it's even unsettling. And he is uh, one of the most hesitant to continue the mission, much like Ian Malcolm was about uh, being in Jurassic Park or even the operation of the park. So he sees logically, much like Ian Malcolm, that things are going to go wrong. So I enjoyed Harry from the movie more than the book. I don't know if Samuel Jackson read the book or when the book was being adapted into a screenplay, they purposely made these changes, uh, these changes to the character. Although the movie was a failure at 13%, and has a, excuse me, was a failure, I think it, it had a budget of somewhere between 75 million and 80 million in, on Rotten Tomatoes. It has a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, but on IMDb it has currently 6.1. So that's kind of mixed. But I do think it was a pretty solid movie, and I do think it was worth watching. Uh, so if you get the chance, check it out. Anyway, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the video.